and guest tonight has had two gold albums in the past three years. Her latest album is called Under the Pink, and surprisingly, it has nothing to do with Ted Kennedy's nose. Ladies and gentlemen, Tori Amos. <laughs> I'm on the dating game. <laughs> well, uh, let's see how the uh, audience voted, shall we? Let's. Uh... Uh, you know, I, you live over in London, right? Yes. Yeah. How, well, now, why is that? Other than you just wanted to get away as far as you could from Los Angeles. Um, I like the people there. They're funny. Yeah. Great sense of humor. Yeah. You know, I write better. I think. Mm -hmm. How long have you been there? Three years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a little. Uh, I, I guess the only downside to England is I've been over there a couple of times. Is is I always think of the food is yeah. kind of. But I'm a very good cook. Are you? Yes, I am. So you don't go out a lot. You're not into the English cheese scene so much. You're cooking yourself. <laughs> no, I cook a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I read an article. I read up uh, obviously a lot on you before the interview, and I read that one article from the New Musical Express in England described you as a, this is what they said, I don't know where this comes from, 24 carat Fruit Loop. <laughs> what the hell does that well, mean? Well, at least it was 24 carat, right? I mean, come on. True. It could have been one of those zirconium okay. Fruit Loops. Oh, wait, what is that about? Um, you know, they have a hard time with Americans talking about reincarnation or anything. They just, anytime you talk about anything that's, um, I don't want to say spiritual, but Mm -hmm. Close to that, they just they start to throw up. Yeah, you get into. That. So I'm I'm bringing yeah. crystal suppositories now with me when I go and have an interview with the English. I'm like, put this one in first, honey, before we talk. Oh, that's that's going to help with the articles, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, what uh, you mentioned reincarnation? Is this something that you're a, a follower of? It just makes sense. My grandfather was part Cherokee, so I just grew up thinking that way. Mm -hmm. But I'm always amazed at that. I mean, it sounds, for somebody who doesn't know a lot about it or hasn't studied it, reincarnation, the idea of me having been a goat or whatever, <laughs> is just, it's, it's so what about, bizarre. What about you being a sexy babe? Maybe you were a sexy babe in your last life. <laughs> you know. That would be, make sense because I've been gypped in this life so bad. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, what do you think you were, what do you think, what do you think in past life? I know Shirley MacLaine says that she was, what was the name of that guy? Okay. <laughs> she's not, uh, she's very she, famous. I yeah. forget the name of the guy that she said that she was in the previous life. Do you have somebody in particular that you think you were? I was Bob. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and I could, Just Bob. And I, could, yeah. But I could cook then, too. I was a really good cook. <laughs> Uh, and I had lots of babes. Uh -huh. I got all the babes. And I had a few guys, too, probably. How, uh, how's the dating scene now? <laughs> it's okay. Uh -huh. Do you go out a lot with the old English chaps over there? No, I'm really shy. I stick to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm boring. I put I... it all in my music, and I just sit around. Yeah. I don't believe that for some reason. <laughs> I'm not telling. What kind of uh, what kind of fans do you have? I know that Mark was telling me before the uh, show. He said uh, she's got some uh, pretty strange uh, followers out there. Not you, folks. Not them. No. But do, is that true? There's some sickies. Yeah, we got a few. You're not talking about me, are you? <laughs> I don't know. If you're the guy that writes me the letter every week, I mean, it's hard to you tell. You have a guy who writes you a continuous letter every week. Uh huh. We have this guy. He wants to um. Marry me, uh -huh. then tie me to the chair, then read the Bible 18 hours a day to me. And if I can't deal with the leather thongs, he says he'll just keep praying more for me. No, I, so thoughtful of him, isn't it? Didn't I call him leather straps? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, when you were... That went over real well, didn't it? Thank you. 
Uh, I know the uh, the uh, Hollywood Reporter you just played. When did you play? Last night here? Last night and the night before. Her songs are naked, bleeding confessionals, and her fans adore her for it. Do you find that you have a pretty good following? We respect each other. Mm. Hmm. And it's uh, it's vastly uh, different following than what you had when you originally started out. Because I know you were kind of you described yourself as, as more of a uh, what was it a bite, a rock chick. Well, actually, those people are coming too. <laughs> oh, you're I'm getting... just uh, I just don't wear the same boots. I used to wear the boots and my hair. You know, I had the hairspray. I had three cans in my purse. Uh huh. My songs were, <laughs> shit, but I mean, I had the hairspray. <laughs> they were what? <laughs> Uh, you said here in the uh, Los Angeles Times, you said here in the Los Angeles Times, if I hadn't become a rock chick, I would be dead today, so long live hairspray. Hey, uh, why would you be dead if you weren't, uh, hadn't been a rock chick? Because I had so much, um, religious suppression mm -hmm. from my upbringing. Mm-hmm. Kind of set you free a little bit? Well, you put those, uh, plastic snake boots on and see what happens to you. <laughs> It was very right. funny. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, this was the, uh, if you hadn't no! seen it, Why Can't Tori Reid, the old, the old Tori Amos. Oh, God. Oh. What's with the sword there? Any particular significance to I was that? a Viking in another life. <laughs> this is what I wanted to get to. Uh, were you a Viking in another life, or is that, uh... No, I was a Viking in another life, and I got all the babes from the Irish coast. But the thing is, I'm trying to call... Now, see, I just, I'm sorry, but that went right over my head. <laughs> Look, you know, if you're gonna be something, I think you have different experiences. That's how you, that's how you grow. There's a part of me that understands what it's like to be a guy. You just have different experiences. That's mm. how you're... Right. I don't know. That's how you learn. You think your music's uh, yeah, changed a lot from, from there to where we're at now? Let's hope so. <laughs> God. Uh, the, new, uh, the new album is uh, Under the Pink. New album CD right here. In fact, you want to do a song for us? Yes. All right. Yeah. Tori Amos is here. We'll go to right and be right back. the pink. Here's Tori Amos with clouds on my tongue. Someone's knocking on my kitchen door.
Generous will be my guest. Uh, before we uh, go to the later letter here, real quick, tell me about this, uh, the, the hotline that you have uh, set up that you wanted to mention. I got a lot of letters from so many young women who just couldn't take the next step after their violent experience. So we set up this 800 number. It's 1-800-656-HOPE. And there's somebody there 24 hours a day that can talk to anybody. Well, that's great. That's great. This is the uh, later letter written to you by uh, our previous night's guest, Mr. Kirk Douglas, was oh, here. Hi. Yes, indeed. He writes, uh, Dear Tori, where were you when I made my first movie, The Strange Loves of Martha Ivers, in 1946? <laughs> Love, Kirk Douglas. I believe I was an embryo. What about... No, um, <laughs> no, I was Charles Lawton filming The Six Wives of Henry VIII. Oh, yes, of course. Do you see, uh, you see a lot of uh, movies over there in England? Catch yeah. any uh, films? You do? Yeah. I still so, know so little about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I know a heck of a lot more. That's going to do it, folks. We'll see you back here Monday. Tori Amos, folks, thank you very much for joining us.